Hello, today I'm going to be talking about living a life of humility. And I'm going to start about um, talking about the humility of Jesus. And um, I'm going to be reading from Philippians 2, 5 through 11. So if you want to turn there with me, you can. It says, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So Jesus is the ultimate example of humility because he died on the cross for us. And I'm going to be talking a lot about um, these key points in here, about how he emptied himself and how he became a servant and how that he was obedient, even to the point of death. And ultimately, we should humble ourselves because Je what Jesus has done for us. He sacrificed his life, and therefore we should sacrifice ours, and um, we should come before God in humility because of what Jesus has done for us, because we cannot obtain salvation without Jesus dying for us. So I'm going to also read Matthew 24 through 25 and it says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And this should be acts that we do every day. We should turn from our selfish ways, take up our cross, and follow him. Because we are human, obviously, and we are prone to sin. We, we are going to sin. The only one that was perfect was Jesus. So this is um, required for every day that we have to turn from our sin and decide to follow him every day. It is not something you just do once and then you just ultimately forgive and you have to repent every day. And um, my study Bible said something that really spoke out to me. It says, these three words, turn, take, and follow. It says, turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross, and follow me. All speak of the same radical commitment of confessing one's sinfulness before God in humility, surrendering one's personal ambition to God and living according to his will. So we must humble ourselves and confess our sins so that we can surrender our ambitions and submit to what God wants. And there is a cost to... Um, living a life um, with Jesus. And that cost is your life. And just like Jesus gave up his life, we have to give up the things that we like to do and the things that um, we long for and submit to God. We must live lives according to God's way. Not our own way or what we think we should do, or but submitting to God and what he has planned and we have to sacrifice things that may not be pleasing to him so we have to sacrifice those things that um we want to do but god does not approve of and proverbs sixteen three says commit your works to the lord and your plans will be established so we commit what we want to do to the lord we commit all that we do to the Lord, and He will guide us, and He will lead us. He will lead us when we submit to Him, and when we give all that we can to Him, 
And humility is ultimately sac submitting to God. So submitting all that we have and following him. This is living according to his will, not our own or what we think we should do. So now I'm going to talk about living a life of humility. And I'm going to be reading from Matthew 18, 1 through 4. Um, it says, At that time the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to, to him a child, he put him in the midst of them, and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So a lot of times in our society, we want to be the greatest. And it is like in us that we long to be successful. And that is just the way our culture has um, put it in our lives. But this tells us that we should become like children. So if you think of an old man going all the way down to a baby again, he is um, going down in age. And just like that, we should submit and... Um, it's Luke nine forty eight says, Whoever is least among you is the greatest. So it's not about being the greatest or being the best, but it's about humbling ourselves to God and what He wants. And ultimately, it's about sacrifice and submission and not our way, but God's way. And God deserves all the glory for what um, we go through and what he has brought us through. And it's not that we should boast or um, anything like that, but that God deserves the glory. And John 3.30 says, He must increase, but I must decrease. So our lives should reflect who he is, not who we are and who we want to be, but glorify him and honor him. Second Corinthians 4, 5 says, For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as servants for Jesus' sake. And so when it talks about what we proclaim... That is talking about the gospel of Jesus and telling others what Jesus has done for us. And it says that that is not of ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord. So a lot of times we talk about Jesus being our Savior and being our Lord. And so when he is our Savior, he saved us from our sins and he died on the cross and he was the sacrifice. And when he is Lord, he is in control and he is the Lord of our lives. He is ruler over us, and we submit to him. And it says with ourselves as servants. So it's not about God. It's not about us. It is about God. And we are called to be servants for Jesus' sake. And now I'm going to read Philippians 1, 20 through 21. And it says, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not at all be ashamed, but that with full courage now, as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. So Paul is longing for his life to be honorable to God. And I think we all should long for this. We all should hope and have eager expectation that we are honoring God through our actions and through the things we say and not um, being this person that um, goes in parties on the weekends and then goes to church on Sunday and having one foot in the world and one foot in Christianity, but we should submit and pray that our lives reflect
who God is and what he has done for us. And Psalms 116, 16 and 17 says, O Lord, I am your servant. And verse 17 says, I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. And we should all um, be long to be servants for God. We should all um, want to be servants for the Lord and give um, thanksgiving and be thankful for what he has done for us. Um, so our lives should reflect who he is and not ourselves and what he has done for us. So when we humble ourselves and submit to him, he can use us. And I love um, this passage I'm going to read talks about being a vessel. And I love that because a vessel can be filled and a vessel can also pour out. And so it says, um, 2 Timothy 2, 21 through 22 says, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. So flee from youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. So this talks about cleansing ourselves from what is dishonorable, what is not pleasing to God, and humbling ourselves. And that we will be a vessel for honorable use. I don't know about you, but I want to be used for an honorable use. And I want to be ready for every good work that God has prepared for me. And it says, flee from youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. And so we cleanse ourselves from what is righteous, from what is dishonorable. We submit to God's plan, and he can use us to um, reflect who he is and to tell others about him and to point them towards him. And it says, as we, or I'm, this is my words, not <laughs> the Bible. As we humble ourselves and our lives become less about us and more about him, which is humility, becoming less of ourselves and more of him. He must increase and I must decrease. We learn how to become a servant, ready for the work God has prepared for us. And so now I'm just going to encourage you with a few things. Um, number one is repent from all unrighteousness. Sacrifice those things that you might be holding on to that you might be like uh, slipping through the cracks and just trying to hold on to. Sacrifice those things that are dishonorable to him. And number two, spend time with him and pray and read his word. Learn more about who God is. And um, a lot of times I hear people talk about, well, I don't know what God wants for me. I don't know what his plan is for my life. And the only way you're going to figure that out is reading his word and knowing that um, tomorrow isn't promised. We don't know if what will happen in our lives, but we must submit to him every day and um, glorify him in everything that we do. And um, our lives should be honorable to him. And we should long for that. And we should be servants for him. And number three, submit to God and his plan. Submit to what God wants and not thinking that we have it all together and that we have it all planned out because God could take that away. He could, um, maybe we are longing to play a professional sport, let's say. And then um, we could get hurt and that couldn't happen. God can take things away and he can um, give us new things, but um, 
He has a plan, and it may not go exactly like we think, and it may not be perfect and clearly planned out, because we think we could have it all planned out, and then God could say, no, that is not what I planned for you, and he can use that for his glory, and we can use that to honor him and point others towards him. And number four is be useful. And um, ultimately, tell others about him and point others towards him and be useful for every good work and be honorable and useful and be a vessel. Pour out yourself and all that you have planned and submit to him and be useful for his glory. So I'm just going to pray and you can um, you can repeat what I say. You can kind of um, say your own prayer as I'm praying. Or you can just sit and listen. Whatever you want to do. So dear God, I just um, I thank you for every person that is watching. And God, I thank you for what you have done on the cross for us. I thank you for sending your son to die in our place, God. And I pray that um, I just submit and I sacrifice everything to you, God. Just wash me clean of my sins, God. I pray that um, I will just submit to your plan, God. I give up the things that I have planned for myself, God, and I submit to what you have for me and what you have planned out, not about me, but about you, God, and I pray that I will be useful and honorable to you, God. I pray that um, every action that I do, every word that I say, God, that will point others towards you and that um, you will use me for your good work. And God, I thank you for everyone that is watching, God, and I pray that you will touch their heart and their lives. I pray that they will submit to you and all that you have planned for them. And I pray that they will just repent and submit to you and sacrifice those things that they are holding on to, God. I pray that we will just come together right now in this time, God, and that you will use us for your glory. I pray that you will just have your way in our lives, God, that you will have your way. I thank you for all that you're going to do in our lives and all that you're going to use us for. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, yeah, I, um, I just hope that this really encouraged you. Um, I know I have been really thinking about these things and being useful and submitting to what God wants and not just what I think I want or what I think I need, but submitting to what God wants. And I just, I thank you for watching and um, I hope that you are having um, a great day. <laughs> Bye.